Happy Valley. Mr. Albino. They are getting set up. We did get an invitation from Hampshire College. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Okay, so I guess uh, a housekeeping matter. Uh, I want to file this uh, this waiver of notice. Um, uh, Amhad development uh, was an abutter that uh, did not get notice, uh, and um, uh, and we discovered that uh, in advance of our first hearing. And uh, Mr. Kane signed a waiver. He's one of the principals of Amhad. Okay. Uh, and, see that it's dated before the first uh, meeting and uh, it was stapled I unstapled it to make copies and I forgot to restaple it but that okay. that's the notice that was part of the, uh, the document for kind of to sign that. Who's the abutter? Mm -hmm. uh, Amhead. Amhead Development Green Leaves. Okay. This is part of there's a, a little oh. strip on the near side of their access road in Amherst. That's right. It was, very small piece of land. Okay, so uh, I, I guess um, at, at our last meeting, uh, you folks asked us to uh, supplement uh, our materials, and so uh, in your package you have that, and I'll kind of go down the, the list as we've uh, set it up. Uh, so the first uh, item that you uh, asked for were colored renderings of the buildings and signs, uh, and uh, that is up on the, the board uh, for you, and uh, uh, I'll either let uh, uh, Richard Marks from the Sandry Companies or uh, David Frothingham from the uh, Wilcox and Barton uh, speak to those signs if you have any questions. Please, uh, colors. Nice. What is, it's got happy that a V in the valley. What's that little thing above the V? Is that a Christmas tree? That's part of their, that's their logo. That is, does it, does it looks it look like a diamond. Like, does it look like a marijuana leaf to you? Yeah, that's a marijuana bush. No, it is not. I think it is. <laughs> you think it is? Uh, I've, I've seen a few in my life, and I think it looks like a marijuana leaf. No. It's just not something told the designer not to ever, by the law, in the last one. It's like an arrowhead to me. There's no leaf in there over there. An arrowhead from what tribe? Right? About we tried. The Valley Tribe. Yeah, that's right. Just thought I'd point that out. I mean, here's this one's more blown up, or that one. It's not a leaf, and then you start to imagination. Double-headed arrowhead. Yeah. I think marijuana are always double-headed. Pointing up and down. Yeah, okay. Well, look, it looks like a tomahawk. Do you have any questions on the, uh, the colored renderings? Okay, then the, the next thing that you asked for uh, was a letter from uh, Berkshire Design acknowledging that all concerns uh, raised in their initial letter uh, had been uh, satisfied. Uh, and I think you have that letter. Is that in your package too? Yep. 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 Okay. That's it right there. Okay. Their, their comments are in red. Okay. Very last, very last red line. Recent submission of material, BDG, Berkshire Design, feels that the applicant has adequately responded to all of our concerns. Took a five pages to say that, but that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, you're satisfied. Then the, the next thing you asked for was this MS4 applicability. Uh, and I'll let one of the engineers speak to that. Yes. Yeah. So the MS4 permit um, is a permit that the town was required to get coverage under uh, beginning in 2003 based on population and density and a few other factors. Basically what it does is it uh, requires that the town develops an enforceable mechanism to control water quality discharges to their, to their stormwater systems. And it is specifically two stormwater systems. Uh, it can't be a combined water, stormwater sewer system. Um, so currently the mechanism 
for compliance with the MS4 is this process, is the erosion control and stormwater requirements that you have in your bylaws. The change from the 2003 permit to the 2016 permit, which doesn't go into effect until next July, the biggest change is really comes from the reporting requirements that the town has to make uh, to the state or the EPA based on the same six uh, fundamental minimum measures. Um, the minimum measures are things like good housekeeping, keeping the system clean, um, uh, detecting and removing illicit discharges. The two that apply to this one would be stormwater and erosion control. There is nothing that specific to the MS4 other than complying with the zoning rules that we have to do for either the old or the new MS4 permit. Um, and you're below the threshold for the... We're, we're below the threshold water. for stormwater. We're not creating any new impervious. In fact, we're removing um, about a thousand square feet now. Um, we're not, the building's not over 5,000 square feet in area. Um, and the lot's under an acre. We're not, we're not disturbing an acre, which is the general threshold in the MS4 permit. The town can, towns can set more stringent thresholds. Ours is 40,000. And our zoning bylaw for right. control, it's erosion control. For erosion control. And we're only disturbing about a half an acre. If it was total new construction, would be a different story, would it? What's that? If it was total new construction. If it was total new construction, it'd be, it'd be new development. We'd yeah. be over all the thresholds. Yeah. Okay. All right, the next thing is the request for a waiver of the traffic study for the uh, site plan approval, and you do have that, uh, that request in your package. And Berkshire Design also commented in their letter that the revised narrative in our response to their first letter um, would satisfy. Okay. Well, I'll make a motion to waive the traffic study. Second. Motion second. Wait yes. a minute. Discussion. Does that have to do anything with pedestrian traffic? Because there is a, a bus stop just down from that. I, I drove down there and you have to cross. There's a sidewalk up to the next business, but there's nothing going there. What's going to happen with that? Here's copy of photos of the bus stop area. You got the sidewalk there and yep. everything in There's it? There's a sidewalk there. We are. Where does that yeah. sidewalk does not stop at your property, though? Right? It does not. It stops um, Amherst Town Line. Amherst Town Line, correct. Mm -hmm. And it's not in front of uh, Domino's or Fredman's on either side of us. We are uh, proposing our new site plan to add a sidewalk in front of our uh, from property line to property line. And we also modified, as you requested, a, there's a sidewalk through the garden in the front and hash marks all the way through the handicap area and into the building to indicate where people would walk through. Okay, as well walk. as the sign right yeah, but there's through the bus stop. Between that and mm -hmm. with the sidewalk. They, we can't do anything about that with them. They don't have the authority. We don't have this state road. We can't go to the abutters and say, hey, put a sidewalk in. I don't know. I think it's state property that they could go to the state and do that. The state, we, that meeting I attended there, uh, Bill did too. The state likes to see a sidewalk down that road, and eventually they're going to do that. Well, if, if, if we go property by property, have them put in sidewalks, we will get because the, the Amherst won't tell them that will be coming into us and to yeah. town of Amherst for that. I don't want to see a pedestrian get killed out there either. Well, I don't either, but we can only use, do so much. Yeah. And if, we, if they're putting a sidewalk in along their frontage, I don't see that we can do a whole lot more than that. Mm, maybe. Because anything beyond that would be a board of selectmen going to the state and requesting something, not the planning board. I'm concerned about it. I don't disagree with that. 
I don't think doing nothing. Yes. Okay. So there's a motion and a second. Any other discussion? All in favor for the yeah. waiver of the so the traffic study, right? Yes. 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 Uh, all in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Opposed. Motion passes four to one. One opposed. The next uh, issue was you wanted uh, us to address the bus, pedestrian, bicycle access uh, issue. We spoke about it just a little bit now, but I think that. Uh... Well, I do have in your packets the revised site plan, as we were just discussing. Um, it added a five foot wide. Um, That's number C2. Is it that C2? is number C2. C2, 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 C2 and C3. Five foot wide walk across the front, property line to property line. Also providing access um, straight back into our building, lining up at the handicap spot, providing direct pedestrian access into the site, as well as uh, a crosswalk across the, the drive portion of the, of the parking area. Um, as well as a sign indicating where the nearest bus stop is. The materials are consistent with the other sidewalks in the area. So where is these sidewalks in? Do, do, do people get to walk out in the road? Is we that anticipate them walking the across the grass. And your properties. At the ends of our properties, there is a grass buffer zone that people are walking through now yeah. on a regular basis. There is a, a mark right through the grass. What is the state layout? Is that that is this on state layout, this sidewalk? Yeah, it's up against the edge of the right-of-way, similar to the other sidewalks. It's, so that sidewalk is totally on state layout? With the exception of where it has to bend to avoid the fire hydrant, it is within the state right of way. And we have to get permission from MassDOT for its construction as well as modifications to the entrances. Your, your, your one lot between where the sidewalk ends and your boundary, isn't it? Is that it? Yes, Domino's is between us and the, uh, the town line. And the sidewalk ends at the town line. And the way they have Domino's department, they can walk around that sidewalk on their, yeah, on they their property? Walk, they can walk through the uh, the Here's Domino's. an aerial of how that is set up. So our parcel is this one here, and the sidewalk stops just on the other side of Greenfield Drive, there. And so there's grass between there and Domino's? There's grass between Which there. Which one is Domino's, right This there. is Domino's, this here. Yeah. And there's a grass strip that continues across the front of them. Yeah, and but they could walk around that. There's a little island there, right? Right, in front of right here. Yeah. There's a little island between there and along the front, yeah. and they can walk either in that island or on the edge of the parking lot. And where there, are you, where are you? we're here. Next one. Yep. And then the next sidewalk is three lots the other way at this intersection. There's no sidewalk down the other. They they can walk through the people's property. Down this way. Which they're walking now. Yep. And then there's just sidewalks just at the corners of this intersection. Yeah. Anticipation. Of I assume future as businesses come through getting that thing piecemeal. All right, the next thing that you asked for was uh, to address the erosion sediment control uh, issues. Um, I, I, don't, I think uh, they're that we don't trigger applicability, but I'll let one of the engineers speak to that. So as we discussed, uh, this, this project does result in a net reduction of the impervious area, um, which in itself is an improvement in water quality. Um, we have produced an erosion control plan, um, mostly for during construction to prevent sediment from leaving the site. Um, 
protection of the catch basins in the road, silt fence around the property edges. Um, since the last meeting, we've also added a filter strip along the edge of the parking lot to the west and north, so towards Russell Street and then towards the Friendlies building. Um, these filter strips um, slow down runoff coming off the parking lot so it doesn't uh, cause erosion in um, newly seeded or mulched areas. Um, the island uh, in the front got a little larger and a filter strip was added there as well. Um, that larger island was to offset the additional impervious that was created by adding the walk. What are you using for a filter strip? It's an inch and a half crushed stone. And how big of an area is that? Uh, it's 12 inches off the edge and 8 inches deep. Basically, it just it kills the velocity. Like a trench is running around? Right around here? It's not as much a trench as it is just an area of stone at the edge. So when the water comes off, it um, it will drop its core sediment and it will, the velocity gets reduced at that point. And also, that's it does right, retain. That's right around this whole thing? Right around this whole thing and then this whole edge there as well. Okay. And as we mentioned, the, the stormwater treatment requirements of the voting bylaw um, for redevelopment do require an increase in impervious area and, and buildings of 5,000 square feet or more, neither of which we are. Hence, uh, you have a waiver in front of you uh, if it feels necessary. If they're below the threshold, I don't think we need to waive anything. Mm. Okay. All right. Then, um, so then we have the, uh, that I think uh, addresses all of the issues on the uh, site plan special permit. And there were a couple of things that uh, you asked uh, regarding the special permit dispensary. Uh, one, once again, uh, there is uh, we have a request for a, a traffic study waiver uh, because of the traffic study, uh, and we ask that you waive the traffic study uh, in connection with this uh, application uh, or in lieu thereof that you accept the data that was provided at the initial meeting. So I'll make a motion to waive the traffic study for the dispensary bylaw as well. Second. Motion second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Uh, then um, there was a discussion at the last meeting uh, about uh, what the Amherst Motel was going to be doing, and there was a suggestion that we might want to consider uh, putting up a chain link fence uh, at this stage. And uh, in the supplemental information that I've given you, uh, my uh, my clients are satisfied that uh, as we sit here today, their security system uh, is more than adequate to address all concerns. However, uh, if in the future the Amherst Motel gets what they're planning to uh, bring forth, uh, they'll certainly revisit that issue. Okay. Uh, and then uh, the there was a discussion at the last meeting about um, the posting of a bond. So uh, we did some research on this, and uh, I spoke to Carolyn Mish uh, over at the uh, Northampton Planning Board. Uh, they have no bond requirement over there, uh, and I spoke with Jeff Bag uh, in Amherst. Uh, and they have no bond requirement over there either. Uh, and part of the reason is that, from their perspective, th this is such a valuable product that you would not walk out and leave the product behind. Now, uh, Makes sense. There, and there's a, there's, a, there's a couple of different things that can happen. One is uh, there is almost like a, a subsidized program, uh, and my terminology may not be the terminology that they use uh, in the regulations, uh, but they have to offer discounted uh, pricing for those who cannot afford it. And so uh, on the one hand, if there is a ready market for this stuff, uh, even if my clients were 
going out of the business, uh, they would be able to sell it at discounted prices uh, to other dispensaries, so they could get rid of it that way. The other thing they could do if they were uh, hypothetically just closing up this uh, business operation, they could remove it and bring it back to their grow facility uh, and then redistribute it to another one of their dispensaries if they have other dispensaries. Okay. Now, uh, I did have a, a conversation with, the, with Chief Mason uh, and uh, it, it came to light that, uh, that municipalities have to dispose of contraband uh, drugs uh, and they have a method of doing that. And uh, in the conversation with Chief Mason, in the worst case scenario, uh, my clients leave, they don't clean the place out, uh, then he would have his police officers going over there. We estimated their time at the highest rate possible, uh, which would be their overtime rate on the, I think, 11 to 3 in, or 11 to 7 in the morning shift. Uh, and the amount of work that would be involved, keeping in mind, uh, you would probably never have more, and I think the information I get is more than like 10 pounds of, of the, uh, the medicine uh, at your facility at any given time. Uh, and that's all that they would be removing, and then they would bring it back to their station, handle it the way they would normally handle these things, and then dispose of it, and it's through the state police that they have to dispose of it. He mentioned it's a little bit of a pain in the neck with the new regulations, the way they have to do it, but nonetheless, in our conversation, he estimated, and based on the information that I had given him about the size of the operation, it would cost less than $500 uh, in police time to, uh, to remove the stuff. So, um, with uh, that said, uh, and so the only cost would be for the police uh, overtime, uh, essentially. With that said, uh, we're proposing uh, the posting of a $2,500 cash bond uh, with the, the town treasurer. Now, just in, in case you wonder what this would be like, I have some photographs here of the type of casing uh, that would be used uh, in, in a facility. And if you can take a look. A question for a chair. Chair, uh, have we ever paid much attention to what the planning boards in Northampton or Amherst do? Yes. Yes. Do? Oh, yeah. 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 We get a lot of guidance about what to do and what not to do by They're what about they're the, doing. The roads, yeah, the discontinuation of roads or whatever. Yeah. 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 Here. So if, if you take a look, these are what the cabinets will look like. And so, somewhat. And so it gives you some sense of how much time would be required to, to clean out. So you're saying that facility is going to have just 10 pounds of marijuana? Yeah, uh, well, I'll let them speak to that, but yes, that's fine. Keep, keep, in, keep in mind, they're not selling ounces. They're selling, I think, buds, okay, of, of, of the product and, and uh, or by the gram, okay, and, uh, and some food product. So, but you can see the display type cases. Uh, if you're going in to clean out, you're going to reach your arms in and you're just going to sweep your arm off. There's a total of 10 pounds of marijuana in this dispensary. You're, you're only supposed to supply the dispensary with as much medicine as you think patients will be required. So it's not like you would bring excess inventory. The Chief Mason still insists the uh, your guard security officer has no gun. No, I talked to him about that. I, uh, he, I, I, I did talk to him about that. As long as they goes through him. The, oh, that's what it was. Uh, I did speak about that. It, it was immediately after the last meeting, so I, I forgot. But uh, I think what John's concern was, uh, as Chief Mason uh, indicated to me, was that the. If it was, if the guard was provided by some out-of-state agency, uh, John expressed a concern that do we want somebody in New York State, you know, certifying that uh, this person is qualified to have a gun in this type of a situation? And uh, what Chief Mason wanted was that um, that the approval, the certification, would have to be shown to him or his lieutenant, who's going to be in charge of this activity. Correct. Is that right, but he did not have any objection because I asked him because the response time from the police station to yeah. where, where they are yeah. 
is a, quite a distance. And he's, he's as long as it's checked out that that person is certified correct, correctly and everything else falls in fact and he okays it, that he would not have a problem with that. Okay. All right. And I think um, one uh, other thing that you asked about uh, was the sewer tie-in, sewer management fee. Uh, and I did have a conversation with Mike Tegmanot, uh, and he said that you know, fees are generated by square footage uh, and use, and as long as our square footage is not increasing and in our use, he said, going from gas station to uh, medical marijuana dispensary is retail to retail, so there is no change in use. He says there'll be no change in fees uh, for that location. So I think that addresses all of your issues, but I guess we have a, a new issue to talk about. Well, yeah, let's hold off on that one just yet. Yeah. Okay. Mr. Kapitsky, you're here for general information. You got a comment on something? Just, just, just listening. listening. Okay, that's fine. Right now. Yes, we, uh, this predict, this, we got a letter from the Hampshire Mosque. They were notified of everything. Um, to the planning board, you got a copy of this, Mr. Albino? Yes, I do. Okay. Attention, uh, Mr. Dwyer Clerk, regarding Hampshire Moss response to application of medical Happy Valley Compassion Center. Um, Mr. Dwyer and board members, it is brought to our attention that there is a mass department of public health buffer zone regulation that might have an impact on the above mentioned application. Regulation 105 CMR such and such. A RMD shall not be cited within a radius of 500 feet of any facility in which children commonly congregate. The Hampshire Mosque, which is located at 451 Russell Street, is currently under renovation for completion in the near future. One of the functions of the mosque is to provide of a mosque is to provide Sunday school for the children and other evening instructions for adults, youth, and children. We hope to provide such gatherings at our facility in an ongoing basis. Please do not hesitate, hesitate to get in touch with me if you have any questions or further clarification. Thank you in advance. Mrs. Naz Mohammed, Clerk, Hampshire Mosque Board. Second part of it? No, I can't do it. Hmm? I, I, I think that doesn't really add anything right. to, the, yeah. to um, the declaration to, that to, they intend to. Yeah, and I'm not sure how that impacts this. Well, first of all, let's hypothetically say you get approval here. What are your next steps? Uh, we still have to get uh, our final approval from the state. From the State Department of Public Health? Yes. And their guidelines, so it's not the mosque objecting, the mosque is kind of quoting the state guidelines regarding uh, medical marijuana dispensary. Well, they're citing your zoning bylaw. Well, no, no, they're well, citing the CMR there. Oh, they're it's citing both, which the tracks the zoning uh, bylaw. Which, 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 we, which we track when yeah. put the zoning bylaw into effect, obviously. Um, they're not. They're not saying. They're not objecting to it. They're saying that the CMR 105 may have an effect on this. Um, I mean, does a Sunday school, an occasional evening, where children congregate, have? I don't. If that was really the intent of 105 CMR, either. Um, you know, a Sunday school where you got. Well. Yeah, a number of, you know, not, not certainly not a, a large group of children, but at least a few. Is that really the intent? I don't know. So the uh, mm -hmm. Department mm -hmm. of Public Health has issued some further guidance, um, and they caption this, guidance for municipalities regarding the medical use of marijuana, updated April 2015. Okay. Which says, the department interprets a facility in which children commonly congregate to include facilities in which children are gathered for a particular purpose in a structured and scheduled manner or which are dedicated to the use of children, such as playgrounds, youth service programs, daycare centers, youth sports facilities, dance schools, and gymnastic schools. 
It includes a private home housing a family daycare center, but not a private home where children happen to live. It does not include other facilities such as ice cream shops where children may happen to congregate, but not in a structured scheduled manner. I'm not sure that adds a lot of clarity to it, but that's, that's the state's interpretation. Um, I think my feeling on this is that the applicant is entitled to have the application judged on the law and the facts at the time of application. And at the time of application, Hampshire Mosque is not providing any programs. They hope to provide programs. They intend to provide programs. They are not providing programs at this time. They do not have a certificate of occupancy, as far as I know. The building inspector is out on vacation this week, so I wasn't able to verify that. Uh, but it doesn't look like it's occupied presently. Well, they're still in construction. Yeah. So uh, my sense is that whatever that means going forward, um, it doesn't apply presently. So you're, if, I'm, if all of a sudden their Sunday school opens before they get approval from the state, uh, the state you still say it's okay? It, no, it, it's from, from, the, from a zoning perspective, yes, because well, the zoning contrary to a, our well, state, it's contrary to the state rules and regulations, and they made it very clear that they don't want to be the, uh, the person yeah. that's shooting this down. It's contrary to the state regulations and contrary to our zoning. They will be up and running before these guys are up and running. We don't know that. The mosque has owned this well, property for well, two they're, years. Well, they're on the construction. They haven't even done removal of the tanks yet. So they're, they're a long way from some opening. Oh, well, I, 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 don't I, would like to I don't think you should underestimate uh, how, how quickly uh, my clients can move uh, once they're ready well, to Well, uh, to me, it's not a question of timing. To me, we have certain rules and regulations we have to follow. And one is our, our uh, zoning bylaws. I mean, we can I speak? To it's 500 feet from a medical dispensary. This building is 431 feet, according to the uh, letter. I'd like to weigh in on this. I agree exactly what you're talking about, Joe. And Mr. Dwyer, I don't agree to what you say. I I view the site. It is under construction. We got a letter of their intent for educational use. I cannot vote for this when. There's a letter sitting there, and who's on first, who's on second? They're not, uh, they're not constructing that and, and dividing that all up just because they don't have nothing to do. They're setting up for that. So it's not who come first, who comes second. No. I agree with you, Joe. Well, I think even if they go to the state level, and the state level really is the qualifying force in granting the permits. Uh, they're going to appeal to the state, and they'll go to the same hearing, and... Uh, well, we don't know that. We don't know that. The, uh, they've well, indicated to me they have no objection to the dispensary. Well, their they objection, want, no, no. Their objection That's was... That's not what they said. If you read the, the letter That's that they, they wrote, said. their objection was, we don't want to be opposed to it. We don't want people we don't want kind trouble. of picking on us. Right. And so we don't want to... So they're kind of sugarcoating a little bit so that they will not be the... the the evil person in this whole scenario. I can see where they said and why they said that. I mean, that second letter is clearly stated. They don't want no one terrorizing them. They don't want no one harassing them. But according to the law, they have a right to do what they want to do on their property. And they took steps to reconstruct that. They're under construction. The other ones, are the, the property's sitting there. There's nothing being constructed or reconstructed. Well, e even if they had no no objection, could we waive this? No, no, no you can't. We can't waive it, but I I think it's irrelevant. I'm su I'm suggesting it's irrelevant. Yeah, I, uh, I, was, I was I was so, I was all set to vote for this until I saw I, this letter. Uh, can I address the issue? Yes. All right. From the perspective of the applicant, so. Uh, Bill has, has cited the guidance uh, that uh, was issued by the Mass Department of Public Health. And the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission also issued some guidance 
to uh, the various uh, town planning boards uh, prior to all of this uh, coming out. Uh, and what they said is, you know, we're, they were suggesting something a little bit more definitive of the definition of, quote, where children commonly congregate. And they came up with some proposed language, and their proposed language, and I'm going to read it to you, Who came up with that? Pine River Valley Planning Commission. Um, it says uh, no RMD and OMMD facility shall be located on a parcel which is within 300 feet of a parcel occupied by, and it goes through the list and it says, or you know, colleges, high schools, or any other use in which children commonly congregate in an organized, ongoing, formal basis. So it says a parcel occupied by. Now there is no parcel within 500 feet of our property today that is occupied by uh, a church, or not, not a church, church isn't in the listing, schools, colleges, university, child care facility, uh, or any other use with children commonly congregating in an organized, ongoing, formal basis. And this town adopted that bylaw, and I think the difference is they suggested 300 feet, and you folks went to 500 feet. But well, what's no, the, the state, state regulations are 500 feet as well. I understand, but no, you know, no, your, the state your regulations result? say if the town does not have other regulations, then these they, will apply. Correct. So we just uh, applied to the. We just we, we just mimicked. But we're we're here today on uh, Hadley zoning bylaw, not on the state regulations. And again, your bylaw says no RMD and OMMD facility shall be located on a parcel which is within 500 feet of a parcel occupied by a child care facility or any other use in which children commonly congregate in an organized, ongoing, and formal basis. So, uh, that said, the first thing that I would point out is, today, there is nothing there. My clients are here requesting a permit. If they get their permit, they have two years to implement it, which it will happen much sooner, but again, that's what a permit does for them. Uh, and so as they sit here before you, there is no parcel occupied by a use for children uh, where they meet in an organized, ongoing formal basis. So not only that, you then have in your packet um, a letter from Tim Nyhart, your own zoning enforcement officer. He's the man who enforces the zoning bylaws in this town. And he has stated, he tracks the history of his involvement with uh, the, the owners of that property at 451 Russell Street, and uh, they came in and got a demolition permit, which signifies nothing, and they did that back in February, but then they came in on March 29th, two weeks after my clients submitted their application uh, for the site plan approval and for the special permit for the medical marijuana dispensary. Uh, and they uh, requested a building permit for, uh, and uh, there, I have a copy of that building permit, and it is for renovate existing building for new assembly space and two new retail spaces, work to include new floor as well as new ceiling. Okay. So, no mention, no discussion, according to a t uh, Tim Nyhart, uh, of anything relating to uh, children's uh, religious education. They then, I should point out, they come back on June 6th and they request a second uh, building permit, and that one is for the installation of four new units to existing ductwork, 120,000 BTUs each, four coils, condensers, two central returns in store. Now, those are the only things that uh, the owners of 451 Russell Street 
have come to uh, any municipal authority for. They, so come you're to. assuming the word assembly means only adults, no children? Well, are you assuming the opposite? Well, I mean, I'm can't. assuming, they you can't whether start. it's a catechism in the Catholic Church, Sunday school, and then... I think it is... And in, if the assembly hall is usually used for educational catechism, Sunday school, Hebrew school, whatever you want to say. Okay. I, listen, I, I can't uh, tell you what you can assume or not assume. Well, you just did. Well, I, well I'll tell you that I don't assume that. Okay. And so, but the point is, then what we have is we have the letter from uh, Mrs. Naz Muhammad, and she talks about one of the functions of a mosque is to provide Sunday school for children and other evening instructions for adults, youth, and children. And then she says, we hope to provide such gatherings at our facility on an ongoing basis. We hope. So what's that? Is this an English one? Hope rather than we will or shall versus may. No, I think it's, it's, this is significant it's stuff. a black and white factual situation. Well, None of that is happening now. What's factual, they came in and got a permit. These guys ain't got no permit. You may filed their application. Well, application, that still is not a permit. It, it freezes things for zoning. That's because they can't apply for the permit until they get our approval. If we vote in favor of this, do they have an appeal process to the state? Yes. No, not to the well, state. To the the form, the, the special well, permit is an appealable process. Who has it? Does the mosque have it? Yes, the mosque has an appellate route through the superior court or the land court to our decision. Okay. Whether and, and then there's still the state. Now, by the time with some more time elapsing, maybe Department of Public Health will be more inclined to buy your argument if the mosque does something by the time the application gets to the next step. But, you know, just as a matter of law and fact, there is a shell on that site. There is not an ongoing program of any kind today. And today, these people have a vested right to their, their application. They filed, uh, they're entitled to be uh, processed on the basis of the law and the facts that applied on the date of their application, which was March, correct? Uh, March 1. Uh, March, March 15, 15, I'm sorry. Uh, March, March 15. 15. Okay. So whatever, whatever the situation on the ground was on March 15 is what we are looking at. What it might be six months from now is not a concern. The same thing, just because we think we may want to increase frontage at next town meeting. We don't. But just in case, hypothetically, we wanted to increase frontage at next town meeting, we couldn't start denying building permits today based on what the frontage might be a year from now. We have, we're stuck with what we've got. We're, we have to work with what we've got. Notice if the notice is in the paper and it's in a bylaw, yes, we can. Well, you can't do it a year ahead of time anyway. Well, so that's, but that's, nevertheless, but, but so we, we, we can't apply potential future law to the current situation. No, it's not future law. It it's in our bylaw. It says where this is being conducted, and it's not being conducted. It is under construction. So Doesn't matter. I, I disagree and, with you, Dwayne, you know, 100 I also disagree. They came before us be, because they're in a religious institution. They're exempt from site plan. So they have already initiated, as far as I'm concerned, their intent to do something. Of a religious and that was over a year ago, and they didn't do anything. Well, they've got two years and they to still, do it. Well, no, they got a waiver of site plan approval, so no clocks are running on that one. Um, well, okay. Oh. Well, and, and, I didn't even go to a Holiday Inn, so I'm arguing like a lawyer. Well, and, I don't want to argue like a lawyer, because every lawyer you talk to, you get a different opinion from them. <laughs> so, the, what a big, again, price tag. We, we maintain that there's nothing going on there, and there is nothing going on there. there is. And they have not even, until this letter, which I understand was solicited, okay, um, they uh, have not expressed uh, any intent to, uh, to offer uh, children's activities there. Now, I'd like you to think of this for a second, because the, the comment in uh, Ms. Muhammad's letter says, uh, we hope to run children's activities on an ongoing basis. So 
hypothetically, let's assume that they were open today and operating. And then you said, okay, well, what type of activities are you running there? And how often are you running there? And how formal are they, uh, are they being? Well, you don't know today, even if you want to assume that, that, that they've committed already to these activities, you don't know whether they qualify as an activity that is being conducted uh, on an uh, organized, ongoing, formal basis. I mean, is it like a place where people who are going to services get to just drop their kids in and the kids sit there and, and, and no. color? Or is it something that the children have to register for and that they come you know, every Saturday or Sunday at 2 o'clock in the afternoon? If you, you're, you can't suppose what they're doing at this point in time. But if they were up and running, you would have all that information in front of you. And you would then be able, as a board, to independently evaluate whether or not it is something that's being conducted on an ongoing basis. Is once a month often enough to be ongoing? Does it have to be twice a week? Yeah, I'm, you're we, you're oh, now oh, trivializing oh, somebody else's oh, type of religion. And this is a very sensitive effect. issue in this day and age. And I don't want to be kind of put on record as trivializing as you have tried to know. I absolutely have not. I take offense that you've well, suggested that I trivialize, trivialize their religion. Joe, well, they're saying, doing nothing. You're, no, you're, you're, you're splitting hairs. Is it ongoing? Is it, if it's once a month, hey, is it ongoing? That's what your okay. bylaw says. says. We don't have to split hairs. Why are doing we, nothing to Why don't we postpone this for six months and see what happens? We can't. We can't. We can't. We can't. Okay. If, well, let's take a vote. It will be allowed by default. Well, then let's take a vote. If we uh, do not act on it in a timely manner. Yes. Mr. Chairman, may I have yes. a comment sure. on uh, As you know, when they approached us for the agreement, first of all, I'm speaking as an individual, not representing the Board of Selectmen, okay? Uh, when they approached us, we were under the assumption, at least I was, that they were the first applicant. After the agreement was voted three to two in favor, I learned they weren't the first applicant and Amos was the first applicant. My question at that hearing was what we're talking about right now. A week and a half ago, I was eating breakfast in Sylvester's in Northampton. There was a Moss member sitting next to me. I got up and started talking to him. He was a professor at the uh, Smith College. He had three children there with him, one four, one ten, and one of high school age that is going to attend the University of Massachusetts. And he explained to me that there is no other mosque in the area besides the one in Amherst, and it's relocating to here. The closest one to that is Springfield. And he also said they've been very quiet dealing with Hadley because of the problems they had in Pelham when they applied. And he says they don't want to rough anybody's feathers here in Halley or cause any problems. Then I further went on to ask him, will you be utilizing this facility with your children to educate them in your faith? And he says, yes, we will. And that's what, just information that I obtained. What, what does that mean, educate them in their faith? Well, like, let's start this I mean, I mean just bring, I'm not trying to be a, a I'm not trying to, be a wise guy here, but just bringing them to it's their the Muslim thing. just bringing them into their religious services is trying to educate them, as opposed to you know is there going to be, you know what, what kind of I I don't know exactly what that means. I didn't ask them if you they know. were going to have daycare. Yeah, that, that, or that, 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 if that's what you're asking. Yeah, I didn't ask that yeah, question. Yeah, that's the only question I'm asking there. Is like I didn't ask. If, that. You, if you simply bringing your children to your faith's church is promoting them in their religion to me. I guess what he's trying to say to me and the way I understood it, they would be doing the same thing they're doing in Amherst presently, except they're going to be doing it in Hadley. So I, I guess all I can say to that, Donald, is that sort of illustrates my point. Whatever they're doing, they're doing in Amherst. They're not doing it in Hadley. And so this application comes in on a blank slate. Didn't you say they move their operations to Amherst, I mean from Amherst to Hadley. 
Okay, not here now. That's you're the point. building it now. We, we, we have, you know, my opinion is we have to deal with the facts in front of us. And the facts in front of us are that we're not doing anything right now. They haven't intent. They haven't shown us the intent of what they're going to do, except have a religious service there. Um, that was what they told us when they came in. Yeah, I would have th hoped that if they had a real concern about this, that they would have been here tonight, talking about it. And, and the fact that they're concerned about what we're going to yeah. think or somebody else is going to think is almost an insult to the democratic yeah. process. You know, I, I got a feeling that they're. You know, I, I don't want to put words in their mouth, but they don't seem to be by the, the the wording of either of these two letters doesn't seem to show a serious concern of this facility being 500, 400 something feet away from them. Then why did they quote that section of law? Then, if they're not so much, we we have certainly had people send letters saying, "I am unable to attend, but I oppose." Yeah. We have no letters of that sort. <clears throat> the only letter we have is a statement of intent and a, and a correct statement of, it's a correct citation of the Department of Public Health regulations. Well, maybe they didn't hi hire a lawyer like you two guys and come up with the right legal lingo. She is a lawyer, isn't she? Don't know. Don't know. Uh, it's very, it, it's a, it's a, a very succinct. Letter. Why don't you make a motion, Mr. Doyle? Because we need to beat this up. Okay. Any other discussion? Well, I think everything else has been settled except for this one letter concern. Is that basically correct, everybody? Everything been satisfied? No, I wasn't satisfied with the fence around it, that they don't need it. I think when they build that motel, there's going to be a lot of foot traffic. With that. Oh, and, and, and they, they've said that when the, if that does come to pass, then they'll have to review that. They may, but if there's not going to be, if it doesn't come to pass, then I'm going to put the fence up just because. That's all. Yeah. They well, certainly we, won't come back here to do you it. Know, we were talking about a disposal of the contents bond. Do we want a construction bond? Because they say they're going to come back with a fence. If it does pass. Well, whether or not there's a fence there. Well, in, in, do we want a construction bond? No. No, I don't think so. Let me, let me my, my two cents on the fence. If they don't put up a fence and they should have one, they're going to know that really quick if they start having vandalism. And if they have vandalism, you know, it, it, might, be, it might be quick and severe, and they'll put up a fence if they need it. Um, if they don't, if they start, if they want to live with vandalism and losing their process, you know, I, I can't imagine that they're not going to respond to a concern if it comes up. I thought this was all about security. Fences are for security. They've got all they've got all kind of security cameras. If somebody breaks into the place, they'll know who did it within a reason. It's gonna be they got cameras all over the place. If that fence is an issue, it, as far as this board's concerned tonight, my clients will agree to put up a fence. Yeah, if the plan is approved as proposed. Yeah. Then it won't be issue. Okay, so I'll make a motion to approve the application for a site plan approval special permit and to approve the application for a uh, registered, uh, so I guess this is an off-site medical marijuana dispensary on the um, special permit. The project satisfies the general purposes of the site plan approval bylaw. Uh, the project is in harmony with the general purposes of the med marijuana. Uh, project is not detrimental to the established or future character of the neighborhood. The intended uses are not prohibited uh, by the bylaw and are permitted thereby. Work to be conducted in accordance with the plans dated um, uh, July 21, 2016. Uh, wave traffic studies for both aspects. Copies of the plans have been submitted as provided by law. Um, proposal satisfies site plan approval. Um, design features are considered to be binding. Um, approval is for uh, an off-site medical marijuana dispensary only and not for any other uses, including 
recreational marijuana sign detail is uh, will be compliant with the um, section 29.3 landscaping to be installed uh, pursuant to the plans outdoor lighting shielded no storage trailer shipping containers or anything else um, don't need to provide performance security. Approval of, subject to approval of other boards if and as required, including the Conservation Commission, the Sewer Commission, the Water Commissioners, and state agencies with jurisdiction. Any project changes directed by other boards must be approved by the Planning Board. Uh, project to be reviewed for compliance by an independent consultant. Um, site plan shall not become effective until uh, uh, this uh, decision is recorded and referenced. Uh, decision is recorded. Um, regarding uh, the medical marijuana dispensary um, findings, this is an off site medical marijuana dispensary. The location is appropriate, the application is complete. Uh, the facility is designed to minimize adverse visual impacts. The facility demonstrates it will meet all permitting requirements of all applicable state agencies. Um, the applicant is in compliance with all uh, applicable sections of the bylaw. Uh, it meets a demonstrated need in that we have no others in town. Um, it provides adequate security measures. Um, adequately addresses uh, issues of traffic demand, circulation flow, parking, and queuing. Uh, uses will be in strict compliance with the terms of the bylaw. No sale uh, shall occur upon the premises or via delivery from the premises between the hours of 8 p.m. and 8 a.m. All aspects of the facility will be constructed and operated as shown in the application. All signage will be as shown on the application. The applicant is responsible for compliance with the reporting requirements. Special permit is specific to the applicant. Uh, this approval is for an off-site medical marijuana dispensary. Any other uses require further approval. And that's the motion. That site plan in, in R and in OMD in one? Yes. Okay. So it doesn't seem to be any point in splitting it because okay. they stand they stand okay. or fall together. Okay. That is the motion. We have a second. Second. Motion a second. Any other discussion? All in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? No. no. John and Joe say no. Motion failed because you need a supermajority, four people, so the motion fails. No. With that no vote, can they come back in six months? They can see us in court in 20 days. I said, can they come back in six months to reconsider? Yes, they can come back with, they can come back at any time, yes. Okay. Now that's what I asked for before you said no. Well, different. that's different. Coming back in six months is different than postponing it for six months. Well, yes. Continuing it for six months. The vote's been taken. Well, okay. Yeah, but we, we can't continue it for six months. Right. Okay. Well, they can do it this way and come back. That's correct. Okay. If they decide. All right.